left the store and I went down the street to my bus. My bus came and I got on, started walking toward the back, sat down beside this beautiful blonde Chinese girl. I said hello, and she said hello. I said, isn't it an amazing day? And she said, yes, it is, I guess. I said, what do you mean you guess? She said, well, things haven't been going too well for me lately. I said, like what? She said, I can't tell you. I don't even know you. And I said, yeah, but sometimes it's good to tell your problems to an absolute total stranger on a bus. <laughs> and she said, well, I've just come back from my analyst, and he's still unable to help me. And I said, what's the problem? And she paused and said, I'm a nymphomaniac and I only get turned on by Jewish cowboys. <laughs> then she said, by the way, my name's Diane. And I said, hello, Diane, I'm Bucky Goldstein. Hi, I'm John Cohen. In this episode of Crash Course, what do you need to know? What are the, uh, the simplest elements that can get you 80% of the way there. If there were a crash course, what might that look like? And that's going to be the focus of this episode of Crash Course with John Cohen. Thanks for joining. Let's get started. Last night I was in a bar and I walked up to this beautiful woman and I said, do you live around here often? <laughs> she said, you're wearing two different color socks. I said, yes, but to me they're the same because I go by thickness. And she said, how do you feel? And I said, well, you know, when you're sitting on a chair and you lean back, so you're just on two legs and then you lean too far and you almost fall over with just at the last second you catch yourself. I feel like that all the time. <laughs> That's my English. Normalcy bias. It basically means that most people, most people, and this is very important, most people on the planet fail or actively refuse to plan or account for events that have never happened before. We have an inbuilt state where we think the future will be a reflection of the past. And just because something never happened before, we, our brain, if we don't switch to sort of system two thinking, which I'll talk about in a separate video, our brain will convince ourselves that it is highly unlikely that something will happen that has never happened before. Let's get into it. Number one is anchoring bias. We humans usually completely rely on the first information that we receive, no matter how reliable that piece of information is, when we take decisions. 
The very first information has tremendous effect on our brain. For instance, I want to sell you a car, and you are interested to buy it. Let's say you ask me what the price is, and I tell you thirty thousand dollars. Now, if you come back a week later and I say I'll sell it to you for twenty thousand dollars. This seems like a new, very cheap price to you, right? Because your judgment is based on the initial information you got, which was thirty thousand. You feel like you're getting a great deal, but let's say the first time that you ask me and I say ten thousand, and then you come back the next week and I tell you I'm going to sell it to you for twenty thousand. Now it doesn't look like a very good deal because of the anchoring bias. This is just a very generic use of the anchoring bias, and I don't want a bunch of comments about why a thirty thousand dollar car should be sold for ten thousand dollars. But another example is trees. What if I asked you if the tallest tree in the world was higher or lower than 1,200 feet, and if so, how tall? The same effect occurs if I ask you to guess out of thin air instead of giving you an anchor of 1,200 feet. The results are crazy. <laughs> Two availability heuristic bias. People overestimate the importance of information that they have. Let me give you an example here. Some people think that terrorism is the biggest threat to the United States because that's what they see on TV. The news always talks about it, and because of that, it inflates the danger. But if you look at the real perspectives, televisions cause 55 times more deaths than terrorism. Yes, TVs literally fall on people and kill them 55 more times than terrorism. You are more likely to be killed by a cow than a terrorist, according to the Consumer Product Safety Commission. It's more likely to die from a coconut falling on your head and killing you than a terrorist attack. Thank you, Gary Vaynerchuk, for that one. Even the police that are hired to protect you from terrorists, it's estimated that you are 130 times more likely to be killed by the police than by a terrorist. That's because people do not make their decision based on facts and statistics, but usually they make it on news and stories and stuff they hear from other people. It's way scarier to die from a terrorist attack than a falling coconut, and because of this, usually the news won't cover it because there's not much money in it. Is the bandwagon effect? People do or believe in something not because they actually do believe it, but because that's what the rest of the world believes in. In other words, following the rest without thinking. If you've ever heard someone say, "Well, if your friends jump off a bridge, would you?" Then that someone is accusing you of the bandwagon effect. It happens a lot with us. I mean, a lot of people vote for a certain candidate in the election because he's the most popular, or because they want to be part of the majority. It happens a lot in the stock market too. If someone starts buying a stock because they think it's going to rise, then a lot of other people are going to start picking the stock as well. It can also happen during meetings. If everyone agrees on something, you are more likely to agree with them on that object. <laughs> Number four is choice supportive bias. So people have the tendency to defend themselves because it was their choice. Just because I made the choice, it must be right. For example, let's say a person buys an Apple product. Let's say it's a MacBook instead of a Windows PC. Well, he's more likely to ignore the downsides or the faults of the Apple computer while pointing out the downsides of the PC. He is more likely to notice the advantages of the Apple computer, not the Windows computer. Why would someone point out that they made a bad decision? Well, let's say you have a dog. You think it's awesome because it's your dog, although it might poop on the floor every now and then. The same goes for political candidates. Not the pooping part, but they both may suck. But one of the lesser of two evils may be more right in your mind because you voted for them. <laughs>
Number six, the ostrich bias. This is the decision, or rather subconscious decision, to ignore the negative information. It may also be an indication we only want to consider the positive aspects of something. This goes beyond not only looking for the positive information, but this is when there is negative information and we choose to ignore it as an outlier. Sometimes, even when we have a problem, we try to ignore it thinking it will go away. Let's say you have an assignment to do. It's not something that you really want to do, so you may just keep on procrastinating with it because your mind thinks that it will go away or it is solved by ignoring it. Smokers usually, they know it's bad for their health, but a lot of them keep ignoring the negative implications of cigarettes, thinking it will not damage them or might stop them before anything serious will happen, because they consider themselves an outlier. To avoid finding out negative information, we just stop looking for it. Now, this could be a serious crime in many scientific research laboratories, and basically promotes ignorance. <laughs> Number 8. Overconfidence. Sometimes you get too confident and start taking decisions not based on facts but based on your opinion or gut because you have been correct so many times in the past. For example, you are a stock trader and you pick 5 stocks and in a couple years all of them turn out to be successful or profitable. It increases your confidence to a point to where you can start believing that whatever stock you pick will be successful. It's quite dangerous because you might stop looking at the facts and solely rely on your opinion. Check out the gambler's fallacy if you want more information on this. Just because you flipped a coin five times and it landed on heads doesn't mean that the next time there's more than a 50% chance of it landing on a head again. Ego is the Enemy is a great book about this bias. <laughs> Number 11, Selective Perception. I like this one. Selective perception is a form of bias that causes people to perceive messages and actions according to their frame of reference. Using selective perception, people tend to overlook and forget that contradicts their beliefs or expectations. Let's say, for example, you're a smoker and you're a big fan of soccer. You are more likely to ignore all the negative advertisements about cigarettes because since you are already smoking, you have this perception that it's okay to smoke. But if there's an advertisement about soccer, you are more likely to notice it because you have a very positive perception about it. This is actually something really interesting and has to do with how you perceive the world due to your subconscious mind and what it filters out. <laughs> The last one is called the blind spot bias. If I asked you how biased you are, you would probably say that you are less biased than the average person, and you are more likely to base your judgment on facts and statistics, and that's what's known as the blind spot bias, or the bias bias. You are biased because you think that you are less biased than everyone else. For example, I gifted something to my teacher, and the next week she gave me a good grade on a test. If you ask her whether she was biased when she gave me that grade, the answer will be that the gift never affected her decision when marking my paper. But if you ask her if other teachers are biased when students give them gifts, she will say yes, in most cases. And that's what the blind spot bias is. One time right in the middle of a job interview, I took out a book and I started reading. <laughs> the guy said, what the hell are you doing? I said, let me ask you one question. If you're in a vehicle and you were traveling at the speed of light, then you turned your lights on, would they do anything? <laughs> he said, I don't know. I said, forget it then, I don't want to work for you. <laughs> I'm John Cohen. Thanks for joining Crash Course. Now there was a time when you love me so. I couldn't do wrong. But now you need to know. See, I've been a bad, a bad, a bad, bad man. Yeah, I'm indeed.
map of the United States is actual size. It says one mile equals one mile. <laughs> <laughs> 